Hello everyone, uh, it's your boy Josh, back at it again with random deck profiles from decks no one will ever play. I say that, I've done the tier one, but you know, tit for tat. Anyway, today we're going to be doing Shino Birds because they just got new support and I absolutely adore this deck because I once won a 2v2 with it. <laughs> That's my justification. Anyway, no, the new support's good, so we'll just go through the deck. We're starting off very simply with three arrows hammer because when you normal summon it, it uh, searches a spirit. They're all spirits, so it's good consistency. Important to remember is that most of these monsters that you'll be summoning don't stay on the field. Most of them will be going back to your end in the end phase. Just something to worry about. If you like having big gummy boards, this ain't the deck for you, that's for sure. Next one is Sakitama, the really busted spirit that they released for everyone. You can um, reveal it to normal summon a extra spirit monster. And this is just in addition to everything. You can get multiple normal summons with this. Um, it's very nice because it triggers Aratama. Uh, it triggers the next one, Nikitama. Um, also, when it's tributed, you can recycle a spirit. So this can recycle a spirit that you've used for a, um, a tribute summon or MZ. Uh, it can recycle your spirits when you need them to. Honestly... The second effect on this, really good to keep in mind. The next spirit we're going to have is the Green Ball Nikitama. Nikitama, uh, when you normal summon it, gives you a extra normal summon of a spirit. Uh, this one is a hard one, so you can't, you know, use it multiple times. But uh, also, when it's sent to Graveyard while you control a spirit, you can draw one. So it's just an upstart with a bunch of the stuff. If you use it for a... A uh, ritual summon, you can, uh, if you trip it for a ritual summon, sorry, you can just draw one. If you use it for an Eggsy while you have a spirit up, you can draw one. Uh, if you mill it for, I don't know, an Aguido or something, you can draw one. The fact that it's just an upstart for, while you have a spirit on field, very nice, very good. And the next one we've got is a Mano Owato. You, m monsters can activate their effects is a... No, oh, there we go. Now it's focused. Um, yeah, uh, having a card that just says your opponent can't have his monster effects is just broken. If you get this up on your opponent's turn and it sticks, you kind of win. There's not much they can really do. I say that there's some things you can do. It's not a immediate win con. Um, if they have a kaiju, you're screwed. Fenrir can out it. Unfortunately, it has exactly enough attack. Um, well, uh, like Zoo, this if they have got spell trap removal, they can out it. You, this is just having a, a mana up isn't going to win you the game. It's what you're combining it with that should cinch you that win. And they still have to most of the time spend their battle phase to out it. So definitely, it's still a solid card to drop on people. And then one copy of Shino Bird Crane. Uh, all the other Shino birds are bad, but um, specifically the fact that this is a wind spirit uh, is important because that means it triggers um, power spot and the field spell, which will be useful later. Also, uh, it's an upstart if you just summon a spirit while it's on field. You'll notice a lot of times in this deck I am playing a card that draws one because they're nice, a lot of them say it, and it's good consistency. Anyway, now we're going to go on to the... Um, the rituals. So we're going to have two copies of Sh uh, 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 Shino Baron Shade Peacock. Now, this becomes Shino Baron Peacock while it's on field or in grave, which is kind of annoying because you means you can't pre prep it. But uh, you can normal prep it and you can just search off like Aratama or something. Very nice. Um, when what the turn it's ritual summoned, you can tribute it to add any ritual monster or spirit monster. So this is uh, this can include um, the just the, the normal spirits if you've already got um, Shino Baroness Shade in hand. Um, normally the Shino Baroness, uh, you want to search off it, but if you don't, you can grab an Aratama and then search it to just give you extra bodies on field, gives you more resources. Good to keep in mind. And then additionally, it also grabs the ritual spell. You do need it. It is a ritual deck, unfortunately. 
And then both of the um, sh uh, shades say this. So we'll just put that there for now. The other shade. Uh, when they're banished, um, they mandatory effect in the standby phase of next turn, they can special summon themselves. Importantly, they have to be properly special summoned first. So if this isn't the ritual, if this isn't the card that you, if you haven't ritual summoned this card, um, it just fizzles. It's a mandatory effect, but it fizzles. It's a really odd thing. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, Shino uh, Baroness, uh, when it's ritual summoned, uh, can search for a card that lists spirit. Now, this includes Shino Baron Calling, it includes the Field Spell, and it includes Power Spot, which is what you're going to be searching off this, because it's a combo to get a mana. And for the next cards, we have the Big Rituals. Uh, two copies of Shino Baron, one copy of Baroness. Now, they both do similar things, so I'll go over them together. Uh, Baron, when it's summoned, you can bounce up to uh, three monsters your opponent controls and special summon a spirit from hand, a level four or level spirit from hand, ignoring its summoning conditions. Um, this is how you're getting a mano out. If you summon a mano with one of these effects, um, because it wasn't normal summoned, it does not bounce in the end phase. This is important because it means it stays around forever. And if your opponent can out it, it just kind of lost. Um, Shido Baron S shuffles three spell traps instead and specials the spirit monster from deck. Um, couple things to note, if you've already gotten a mana on field um, and you're not winning the game for some reason, you can always go for a, um, a crane because cranes just nups that next turn anyway. It's very nice and I'd keep it in mind. Uh, next we have the Ritual Spell, three copies of Calling. Like I said, I want to run pre-prep in this deck because this lists the big ones. But it, unfortunately, it just can't grab you the little ones, and that's what you really need for these combos. Um, you still need them, that's why you've got three copies of them. But still. Anyway. Next, we have one of the new cards. Stars Align Above the Shrine. Oh, that does actually sound quite nice to say, doesn't it? <laughs> But yeah, um, it's a field spell. Once per turn, you can ritual summon a wind monster by tributing spirits or Shino bird tokens. Uh, oh, that's a point. Ah, rewind slightly. The when the um, big barons bounce themselves to hand in the end phase, they special summon two tokens, which is nice for resource looping. Um, but yeah, so you can tribute um, a spirit monster or Shino bird tokens, and special summon a wind ritual monster from deck now there are some funny things you can do with this i'll say at the end that aren't in this deck profile but um yeah it's just consistency it can turn any spirit into the level four um baron which that's your full combo pretty much it's very nice and then in the end phase for wind monster oh sorry twice per turn if a wind monster is bounced you can either add a spirit from graveyard or um, banished or a ritual spell. So this is recycling your resources. This is your, con your constant resource loop. Or you can set one stars align across the Milky Way directly from deck, which is how we're doing funny things in your opponent's turn. Next, we have one copy of Power Spot. Shinobu Power Spot, very nice because it gives you monsters a 500 attack boost. No, that's not reason to play it. I love attack manipulation, though. I think having any sort of attack manipulation is hilarious. Specifically, this puts a mano at 2-4, which means there's a bunch of normal summons that just don't answer. But yeah, um, if a wind monster you control returns to the hand, uh, you can search for a spirit monster or a ritual spell. Now, there is a... Th um, it's part of the three-card combo. I say three-card combo. This is three cards you need in your end phase to uh, do the rituals. But... Um, it helps, it helps consistently get the ritual spell in hand, or like, basically the PC you're missing. Power's, Power Spot is a very nice one of, and it's searchable off um, Baroness, which is important. Uh, next we have one copy of Stars Align. Stars Align's a funny one. It was a really just random piece of support that got thrown in one of the um, sets, and they've just decided to make it really good now. So... Uh, you can reveal one ritual monster in your hand. 
add a ritual of the same level but different name uh, from your deck. Uh, this is important because it's the way to get it engraved. This is why we're running two copies of Baron and one copy of Baroness. So if you have Baroness, you can grab a Baron. And if you have Baron, you can grab the Baroness. You have to get this engraved because um, its grave effect is the important one. You can banish it from your graveyard and discard one um, ritual spell to use copy that ritual spell's effect. So you copy Calling, you banish the Shino... Um, the two shades from Grave are somewhere like that. Um, summon uh, the big ones in your opponent's turn, resolve their effects, and summon a mana and have it stick. Uh, this is interruption because it's either a bounce three or a shuffle three, which normally can just end a lot of uh, decks' turns, plus the mana, so then they have to out that. Um, it's just a funny board lock, you know? And that's the important piece of that. Next, we have one terror farming because you need to see field spells, and then one copy of set rotation because you need to see your field spells. But you want to be you you need you want your opponents to have a spell trap, and sometimes you can't guarantee the opponents can have a spell trap in their zone. Set rotation is pretty much the best way of like doing that. So um, yeah, one thing to point out as well is that you need to be running two field spells. So what's what's your second field spell, Josh, you might ask? Uh, I don't know where it went. I was have one copy of Gateway to, of, uh, to Chaos, but don't know where it went. Don't ask me. <laughs> I don't know. I used to have one. I thought I had it when I was building the deck. And then as I was building it, I'm like, oh, I can't find this. So yeah, it's a proxy for now. I'm going to order one. Just keep this in mind because I wanted this deck profile to be done. And it's fine. It's the one odd that doesn't really matter because uh, Gateway to Chaos is specifically the good card because it means that it it's a mandatory effect to search and if you can't resolve it, you can't activate it, which keeps the set rotation lock live. Just something to keep in mind if you don't end up shuffling it away. Uh, next, we three copies of Preparation of Rites. Uh, like I said, I want to run pre-prep in this deck. You can't anymore unless you're just playing like the big Sheenos. Um, uh, pre-prep doesn't search the small ones, unfortunately. Um, this one does. Plus it recycles the spell for um, Stars Alone. Above the Milky Way. Um, but yeah, um, specifically as well, I'm running one copy of Saravis, the Ancient and Ascended, to, um, as basically, if I already have the small Shinos, just grab a piece of interruption. There's a lot of times where you've drawn into preparations just slightly too late. And it also it helps uh, recycle your field, uh, use ritual spells. It's the one resource you tend to run low on because you, you, you know, funnily enough, your rituals recycle themselves thanks to them being spirits. It's normally not a positive, it's not a positive, but it's definitely a thing that happens. Anyway, and the next thing we have is a Dogmatica package. So we've got three Nadir Servant, one Ecclesia, one Maximus, and one Punishment. Now, obviously, uh, the Dogmatic Engine is one of the best pieces of um, ritual consistency you could ask for. Nadir Servant? Oh god, my voice broke. The Deer Servant, you can send a, a Grura to draw one, and then search for either a Clethia or a Maximus. Importantly, you're probably going to be searching for Maximus most of the time because you need a um, extra deck monster to to special Ecclesia. So you'll be grabbing Maximus. You'll be using Maximus' effect to banish the Grura, special summon itself, and then effects of Maximus you'll be sending one copy of Herald of Arclight and then one copy of any extract monster you really want. I'm using one copy of Ferrajeet for that, which is just a draw one and put one back. So you draw one, put one back, uh, and then um, just uh, search one with Herald. This engine is really just the best thing you could be asking for. It's another way to get keep bodies on field, just 
funnily enough for that little, little bit of battle protection, if you already have either of these, you can grab Punishment, and then Punishment is just one of the best interruptions in the game. Such a nice consistency boost, definitely recommend it. Now, one thing to say as well is that um, you can swap a couple of the ratios about in this deck. You can um, cu cut the amount of like Amanos and Spirits that you're running to run um, like Hand Traps and Board Breakers. It depends what you prefer. I'm not running any hand traps and ball breakers in this one right now, just because I'm not sure what I want to be um, pushing for in particular. And this is more of the deck concept, quote unquote. Um, so, you know, you can supplement them as you wish. Uh, personally, I'd recommend like Ash and, you know, some good interruption that could be used on both turns. Because really, this deck is a go first deck. Uh, you can run the... You, you probably actually want to fill your side deck with all the board breakers. And then do all the go second stuff. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, on to the extra deck. We have one copy of Baguska. You always need plan B. Just... You've, you've got to have it. Uh, one copy of Aversal because Tears back in the format. And you're going to have to stop it. It also stops and chains sometimes. Quite nice. And then what, one copy of Dagara the Timeless. Um, so I jokingly call it uh, Dark World Douglas because it does just draw two and discard one. It's a really important piece of consistency because it turns any of your um, spirit rank fours into. But you, sorry, your spirit, your level of spirits into consistency. Uh, some funny things you can do with this is. Um, it makes your spirits really big, so you can just uh, attack over them if you've uh, got battle. Uh, if you have some specific opening hands where you open like double um, of the Nikki Tama and one Saki Tama, you can summon Nikki, uh, reveal Saki, um, summon Nikki, and then summon Saki. Overlay the two Nikki Tamas for um, the Garas. Uh, the Garas effect uh, detach two. Uh, draw two, discard one, and then mandatory effect of both the Nikki's engraved to draw two, which is a plus two. If you think about it hard enough, it's really nice and just something to keep in mind. Next, we have uh, one copy of Natis because you've always got to be able to pop your opponent's stuff. It's important. One Maylong because you can also compulse them. It, you know, if they've got some protection effect, does it really matter? Um, two copies of Herald. There's a lot of times where you need to do the second copy of Herald in your opponent's turn with a Nadir Servant. It's just something to keep in mind, and it's a good reason to have two of them. Um, two copies of Garura for pretty much the same reason. Uh, one copy of Fergie. Uh Funnily enough, you can normally summon this. There's no, there's no reason to, but you really can if you want. I guess with Little Knight in the format, you know, it's another way of getting that out if you're running out of resources. But it's a good card anyway. You're playing one copy of Almirage and one copy of Gardner. And this is to get extract monsters in the grave. Uh, there's a lot of times, especially right now with Bestials being in the format, where your opponent will Bestial banish you in a tis or, or your Guru, sorry, to um, thingy. There's another way you can supplement this by um, doing, like, Bucephalus, because they can't banish two. Um, but this is also a way of just turning any of your spirits into um, a Maximus Banish. Or it can turn Nikki Tama into a, just an upstart anyway, if you, like, have, say, a crane that you don't want to get rid of. It's just something to keep in mind. It actually normally comes up when you have a ritual that you need to bounce in the end phase. And you've just got a spare Nick heal. It does come up sometimes and that's why I'm running it over like say one copy of Bucephalus. And then we've got one copy of IP because it's you've got extra monsters. You may as well. One copy of SP. <laughs> SP's broken guys. Why did they just... Power creep unicorn by making unicorn, but you can use it twice. <laughs> um, yeah, so if it's link summoned with a extract monster, 
you can target a cavern field or engrave, banish it. Obviously, that's good anyway. Especially if you use, use it in your opponent's turn. But then also, when your opponent activates something, you can just uh, different dimension them away. Just be gone till, when is it again? The end phase. You know, taking things off the board is always nice. And then, Underworld Goddess. Now, you don't have an out to a lot of towers. So you need to run Underworld Goddess. I really like it. I really... I know I joke about losing to Crooked Cut a lot. But, um... Specifically, I did run against it in Mass Duel the other day. And it's traumatised me again. I, I swear, just... Don't make me play that game, please. <laughs> anyway. Because a lot of people haven't seen this, I'm definitely going to go through a little bit of, um... Comboing. So... Um, there's not really a one card combo in the deck, which is unfortunate. I, I've said multiple times, I think, if there is... If they print, like, one Wind Spirit that searches the field spell, it will be, a, you know, a very good one card combo. Until then, you're running a lot of two card combos, which is normally along the lines of, um, say, a Spirit and the field spell. Um... So, we'll just do it with the spirit that doesn't really do anything. So, you'll normal to the spirit, uh, activate the field spell. You'll use the field spell to um, tribute to special Baron Shade from the deck, which is there. You'll then use Baron Shade's effect. It's not on summon, importantly. There's a couple of situations where your opponent might have some spot removal. Uh, this isn't on summon. But it tributes itself to search for um, a any spirit. So, for example, if you haven't normal summoned, you can grab an Aratama, or if you've like used a Sakitama to get an extra normal summon. Um, but you will normally be going for uh, um, Baroness, and then you grab the Ritual spell along with that, and then Nikitama, you draw one. Um, then you go calling, banishing uh, the shade to special um, Baroness Shade, Baroness Shade effect to grab. Uh, where is it gone? Shino Bird Power Spot. Oh god, I can't find it. It's been lost to time. There we go. Power Spot. Activate Power Spot. And then, uh, in the end phase, Baroness returns, um, trigger one, trigger two. Uh, you'll use Power Spot to grab um, uh, any... Now, this is where you need to know what you're setting up, right? So, you, in order to sell your the interruption in your opponent's turn, you need to have one big, one big ritual. Uh, one Ritual Spell, and Stars Alliance. If you had open any of these, because obviously this is the two-card combo, and it could be the card that you see off Nikitama, um, there's a lot of consistency to help for that, because you have to have all three of those cards in your hand by the end phase. It's can, it's more consistent than you think, is what I will say. But anyway, sorry, let's resolve Power Spot. We'll use it to grab the uh, Ritual Spell. Because I think that's always uh, very important. And then you set stars a lot. And then, so let's hypothetically say that that Nikki Tama draw was the big one. We then turn it into... Um, in the draw phase, you would then go stars align. Stars align revealing Baron. To grab Baroness. And then, in at any point in your opponent's turn, you can banish Dazzleheim, uh, pitching calling to special either one of the big rituals. And then, if you specifically, if you um, summon uh, Baroness, you can special the Amano from deck. Or if you special the Baron, you have to have it in hand. 
another reason you're playing a absolute boatload of um, consistency is so you can get a mano and stuff in hand. Uh, other things to remember about the deck. Um, yeah, a Stars Line is twice Burr's turn. If you have both um, Baron and Baroness, uh, the, and then face that just recycles a whole ritual monster. It's quite nice. Um, the Spirits just have a lot of very funny rank 4 plays. As I was saying before, um, let me just pull these back real quick. If you open, say, Nikitama, uh, Nikitama and Sakitama, you can do the funniest combo in the deck, which is normal Nikitama, um, get the extra normal, uh, reveal Sakitama, normal Sakitama, extra normal, overlay both the green ones for uh, Degara's, and then Degara's effect. Uh, detach those two, you draw two, pitch one, mandatory draw one, mandatory draw one. So it's just nice consistency. Um, specifically as well, if you need to get um, Monsters in Grave for a Maximus, you link one for Almirage, link one for Secure Gardener. It depends where you need it. Otherwise, I think... I think that's everything you need to know for how to set up the big rock that ends your opponent's turn. Uh, other things to keep in mind for like board breakers, um, you run, you can run the other big rock. Nibiru is always nice because uh, it leaves, it definitely leaves your opponent with a uh, monster on field. Oh, that's one thing I should say. Good thing I brought that up. Um, in order to resolve their effects. They have to return to the location that is specified. So if you Shino Baron and then only um, bounce monsters that go to the extra deck, you can't resolve its second effect. That is something you, to keep in mind, and it will. I guarantee you, if you're playing this deck, it will screw it up at some point. Just gotta keep in mind that it needs to return to the hand or the deck uh, to resolve the second effect. It, it can only, it only has to be one of them. Only one of them has to return, but. One of them has to go. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to bring up for this. So, um, yeah. It's it's an okay deck. I'm not going to come out and say it's the best deck. I adore it. I love it. I think it's one of the funniest decks you can play. Because it's using two actually awful summoning mechanics to do hilarious things. Uh watch out when I end up doing the other bad ritual um, summoning condition archetype, Prediction Princess. <laughs> That'll be a thing at some point. But yeah, um, but yeah, no, this is definitely, I think it's definitely enough to topple locals. Um, supplement it with good board breakers and hand traps, and there's not, honestly, a lot of decks that can really stand up to it. Um, there's also some hand traps that don't really work with it. Uh, sometimes one copy of Ash Blossom just isn't enough. Sometimes they can't really imperm and effect veil around you. Um, Bell does nothing. Um, especially if they uh, draw it in their turn. The only thing that really kills this deck is DD Crow. Specifically, if they DD Crow the trap, it kind of screws you. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can always transition to, like I said, with board breakers, you can always transition shit into a go second deck. Have a bit of experimentation. The deck's fun and absolutely cheap as chips. So, anyway, that will be all from me today. So, uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, um, hit the bell, do funny things. I promise I'll laugh. I know Morris won't, and I'll Aiden might laugh, but <laughs> anyway, I'll see you all and have fun.